What is going on, everybody? Uh, two things. One, please subscribe. We're having a great time. Two, do we like that light off during the videos? I was re-watching some of them, and I thought it was kind of glaring. And I kind of was thinking, do I really need that light on? I mean, it's always on because I'm painting right here. When then I kind of film, basically, when I'm done painting for the night. But, um... For you guys, if you actually watch the video and not maybe just listen, which I assume most people do, since I don't have a lot of cool visual editing going on on my channel, uh, maybe it's distracting or bad. And then I got the light over here, which I use on my airbrush area. But let me know in the comments below if I should turn that light off when I film. And now let's get started. Intro, do, 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 do. Uh, I just want to give a few thoughts on why I think from the outside something like the ITC or tournaments or tournament players appears to be bad for the hobby when in fact it's probably actually good for the hobby. And by that I mean you'll see very similar lists placing in the top 10 or whatever at big tournaments or winning a lot of tournaments and it's been going on now for a while that a lot of the books the codexes have kind of people have kind of min maxed them pretty strong there are still some armies that show up and disrupt that but pretty much since the imperial knights came out um things have felt and this is more of an illusion i think but things have felt like it's the Blood Angel, Eye Guard, Castellan list. Um, if you're on Facebook, you'll see all the time people on every Eye Guard, Space Marine, Admech group suggesting to new players or anybody, oh, buy the Castellan, buy the Castellan. And I think a lot of that experience is either from winning or getting crushed by that army or that list or that model and then wanting to maybe be helpful or maybe redirect the pain and suffering to like ah the castellan crushed my army and then when you know a new player's like you know think about starting this army and they're like oh get a castellan uh you know they they feel good because they're like they're gonna help that new player you know experience success supposedly okay so there's that now there's other lists where it's like uh you know 10 15 grotesque right the dark eldar flying ogre thing um a list like that is good for the hobby for the company because right now it's probably under costed anytime you see something in then like droves it's definitely under costed that's just the way the game works but right now, if 10 people go out and build that 10 grotesque list or whatever it is, 15, 21, I don't know how many they take. But uh, the uh, company sells like a ton of those models. And this is super good for them because that model may have only sold, say, a couple a month. I'm not, you know, I have no idea what their actual numbers are. But let's just assume they're... They're huge, so let's say they sold 100 of those a month. Well, if 10 people go out and buy 10, for that month they sold 200, right? They doubled their profits on that particular model for that one month. Now, they let that run for six months or a year, and then obviously it's not going to double, but it's it shoots up per model, right? Then, Chapter Approved comes out. Now, Chapter Approve comes out, they make a ton of money because everybody buys it. Side note, I think I'm splitting the next Chapter Approved and General's Handbook and all those. Uh, I basically use nothing out of the books except for the points. So I think I'd rather just split it with a friend to save a little money on that because it feels like I'm buying trash. <laughs> but that's just a side note. Uh, I suggest you splitting it with a friend too if you realize you never play any of the wacky scenarios or build your own land raiders or whatever so but that aside 
Chapter Proof comes out and sells a ton of books, right? And they try to load it where everybody wants it. They want all the points, all the points changes, beta rules, rules. This one's coming out with the Sisters of Battle, like beta codex or something. Then there's scenarios for open play, campaign stuff sometimes, narrative stuff, all kinds of cool stuff to try and basically trigger that purchase response from all the player base, right? Obviously the collectors, you know, they're not in it. But everybody that plays the game, they want to make sure you have a reason and somewhat buy it and then you, they sell a ton. But when this comes out, it fixes the game. And I think this is the best thing for the hobby because I really do think it fixes the game. And in a sense, right, it, it shuffles it up, right, restacks the deck, I guess, whatever. I don't really care that much about uh, events and winning points for my ITC or whatever. But I do love the constant, like, living rulebook. So I think that's very exciting. So they nerf the grotesque. They already sold, they had 500 of them that have been collecting dust for five years. Now they have two and, you know, whatever they keep in stock, right? So they're sold. Now they go, hey, Carnifexes are not being used at all. We've sold zero Carnifexes. They look. They ask the play testers, hey, well, how come nobody plays Carnifexes? And people do play them, but I'm just, it's just the first thing that came to my head. So the play testers and the people they talk to say, we don't play this model because it doesn't have minus one to hit. Its points are too high. It doesn't have enough shots for its points. Its damage output, its armor save, its movement, it, you know, so on and so forth, all the reasons. Now they take that make changes sometimes to the rules mostly now after the codexes are out that'll be a future thing changing the rules on stuff more but uh they go okay well you know its damage output isn't worth 120 points but its damage output's really enticing at 89 points right 95 points all of a sudden this model becomes very hot right a hot carny. Everybody's heard the term, a hot carny. <laughs> and so they sell the 500 that were collecting dust, or 5 million or whatever, I don't think, whatever, right? And thus, this continues. Except, they do it to all the armies, kinda, right? Or they target all the stockpiles of things that aren't moving, and they try to move them. Now, whether this is intentional or not, I can't imagine a company that big hasn't considered this because I'm stupid and <laughs> I've thought about this and a lot of people have conspiracy theoried it, but if you are a company and you make like thousands of models or however many they make and nobody's playing the Death Strike missile, you know, maybe we drop it way down in points so we can sell a whole bunch of Death Strike missiles, right? So, and that's good for the player because you might already have one or you might like the model and you might want one. It's good for the tournament player because now they see an opportunity to snatch up 6, 9, 10, 12, 15, 20 of something. And then they're going to earn their points and go to, you know, uh, big events and compete for glory. And then this extra sales boost just based on the event popularity and actually so also when people see the knight castellan blood angels eye guard list for example or the harlequin eldar soup list with the vrain or whatever when they see that doing well especially on the facebook groups and stuff they even if they don't play in events or people that your local game store that are like oh i don't play in tournaments Right, and they're like nice people. But then you play against them in a friendly game and their list is like they've spent clearly spent a lot of time researching what does well in tournaments to then play in friendly games and not play in tournaments. And I see this quite a bit too. 
and I think that's because either they've been sold that this is how you play the army, and if you want to win, this is what you got to do. This is the only good army that could possibly be squeezed out of this book. Um, or they don't want to play tournaments because everybody's a power gamer, but then they want to take that kind of edge, power gamer edge, and dominate just friendly games so they could be like, I don't know, the guru of beating down friendly games. Got a bug flying around. <laughs> um, so anyway, it sells models too. The big events, when you see, if you saw, uh, you know, if you went on a big event, you saw like Primaris Apothecaries, there was 10 of them, or wait, there was three of them and every one of the top 10. How many of those do you think are going to be sold? A ton. Because every, not everybody's watching, but be, the way, the amount of people watching the big event spills into social media spills into commission painters instagram profiles because now they're getting commissioned to paint these models it's on youtube how to paint the armor it's on the forums it's all over your local game store uh ebay prices jump up a little bit because everybody all of a sudden takes another look at a model and now it's you know hot carny that's, that's what we should probably call it. hashtag hot carny <laughs> um so this is clearly very, very good for the company because the company, Games Workshop, stock price is like went up $3,000 in the last couple of years. So pretty crazy. <laughs> it's very, very good. They're, they just opened their 500th store. I don't know if that counts ones that have closed in the past because there's definitely one here in Arizona that's not around anymore. Uh, we have two in Phoenix, I guess, but... There was a third one, and it's not around anymore, so I don't know if that adds into the 500 for this big milestone this weekend, or if it's just right now they have 500 operating open stores every day, which is huge. I mean, that's big. I should have really Googled how many stores like uh, my, or Walmart. I wonder how many Walmarts are in America. Probably like 2,500. I don't know, something like that, but that's just a guess. I have no idea. <laughs> but the thing I'm thinking is so that's huge for the company all that extra profit is good because then they take a lot of that and reinvest in new models they clearly can crank out insane amounts of products at this point and I do believe they opened up like another factory or something that they'll be able to even increase production because everything's selling out when something comes out and it's good I mean, good luck getting it. It's sold out, like, for a long time. And there's, I'm sure, a schedule of, like, when they run the molds and when they're printing the models to make sure their supplies aren't ever too low. And then every time one just depletes, that's when they knew they hit, like, a lottery ticket and the rules, I guess. So they make a whole bunch to try and sell them as much as they can while the rules writers slowly fix them. So sell, 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 sell. So the rules are fixed, back up to the comfortable stockpile that they want to have. And they'll do that on multiple products. Sometimes they're not prepared for it, something like a hot carny. Uh, if you remember in the index and Terry Nude Codex came out and Carnifexes were just gone, you could not buy them anywhere. Uh, I think now they're mail order only, so not only can you not buy them in the store, now you had to order them, but they were sold out forever. So that's just an example. Now, you as the non-tournament player are benefiting massively from this. Because not only do you get all the drama and the salt, the, the, mm, the tasty, tasty salt of the internet. People just so mad that their orcs are rebasing on 32s or their buddy bought the castellan knight and whatever it is it's so good for the company and they crank out new products you from the sidelines are you're like the bear standing at the waterfall whereas the tournament players are like the salmon right and they're just mashed in there and there's drama and splashing and then you happen to love say orcs 
and you always thought it'd be cool if a shock attack gun was the engine of your car, whoop, you just scooped up a new model, right? Now, this particular model's not a great example, but because of all this extra money being piled in, and all the talk and chatter and all the social media, Twitter, I, I forgot, I always forget that exists. I can't believe that I forgot that, but no. Um, like all this commotion and buzz, right? Ortober, hashtags, painting Warhammer, give Johan rules, they got comic strips. There's like a fan made Imperial Guard movie right now. Big stuff. You who, even the casual player, should be happy that, like, whoa, a knight with a giant flamethrower comes out, a harpoon gun? You know, I might want that, right? That sounds cool. So, just the driving, like, money into the hobby from these big events, from these tournaments. Plus, there's a lot of people that, like, make their living and feed themselves and feed their family on these big events, on painting on YouTube, on uh, Patreon, right? So it benefits them greatly to have a very thriving games workshop. And a thriving games workshop means a thriving, uh, you know, consumer, I guess, right? You got all kinds of new stuff to buy. Now, if you're not like most of us and have some kind of restraint, right? I got like a mountain that's just like all around me ready to crash down. <laughs> that's how much crap I have. So if you have more restraint than me, then you benefit even more because you're not sitting on a mental breakdown of how much stuff you want to have painted and how fun it's going to be to do but you know what are you going to do next right you know are you working on 40 goliaths or did you just buy one box did you buy four or one so but maybe you don't like goliaths but because i bought four that increases the chance that the redemptionist will be released because not only did i buy four probably 4,000 other people bought one or two or three or four because they wanted to make a full crazy gang. And now that boosts sales for Necromunda and then they release more product for Necromunda and some of us will buy a lot of it. And whereas you might just be picking and choosing your favorite things, um, you're going to benefit too because you'll have a lot of great options. Now, the Thriving Games Workshop, all these say YouTube painters, YouTube... Uh, it's Twitch streamers, Codex reviewers, Tacticas, Battle Reports, um, you know, so on and so forth. Podcasts, blogs, you know, Warhammer Weekly. If Warhammer Weekly, I don't know how many views they get. It's a great show. Go check it out uh, if you like Age of Sigmar and painting. It's a good channel to subscribe to if you paint. Uh, they So if they next week had to do... A Malifo Weekly, if they, were, if they became Malifo Weekly or Dust Weekly or Conflict 47 Weekly, their views that first week are going to be like this. Doom. And people are going to be like, what's this? All the regular people want to see their friends on the internet kind of thing talk. And then the next week you might skip it. And the next week you might skip it. And then after six, seven, eight weeks, you might be like, why am I even subscribed to Malifo Weekly? Right? And that's just an example. Malifo is actually a pretty fun game. But you see what I'm saying? So a lot of people are all in on Games Workshop. Uh, myself, somewhat included, I'm all in on the hobby and painting. So a better games, a more popular, better Games Workshop uh, makes me more likely to succeed in what I'm trying to do. And that would be including this YouTube channel. I want to be trying to do some painting stuff when I figure that out. And I'm launching a brush line. Possibly some other stuff. Uh, and I do my eBay stuff. Check out my store below. Where I just resell and buy and sell stuff. And paint stuff for sale. And maybe try to do commissions and stuff. If there was... Not only, well, first of all, the economy's good right now, too, but if Games Workshop was doing really bad with sales, then that means all the commission painters are probably doing bad, too, because there's just not as many people that want a 
painted army if they feel like they're a part of a sinking ship. Whereas right now, we all feel like we're at the all-you-can-eat shrimp buffet on the Carnival Cruise Line getting, you know, that E. coli free shrimp, right? No E. coli. Just that delicious food coma we're about to enter. So, <laughs> this is kind of related. I think it's very important to the game that there's so much drama and eyeballs and commotion on these big, big events. I mean, the LVO, which I will be at, so say hi. Um, I don't think I'm playing in anything. I gotta buy a ticket for something. But uh, I found a bus that takes you to Vegas for like $3 or $5 or whatever. And I lived in Vegas for four years, so I'm not trying to spend a bunch of money to go somewhere I lived. But, uh, and I don't drink anymore, partially because I lived in Vegas for four years and I did plenty of that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go cheat. So I'm gonna go to LVO. So this LVO is gonna be like a 700 person 40K tournament. That's gonna get some attention. And everybody's gonna wanna know the top eight, the top 10, the day two. Everybody's gonna be looking at lists, army lists, and that's gonna drive a lot of sales. Because if somebody rolls in there with like the I'm trying to think of an older like a space marine eh, that's a hard example but a space marine assault marine army or a vanguard veteran army and they win even all the players that don't want to build that exact army you're going to really take a hard look at maybe buying a box and considering them as a choice for their army or adding them to their collection it happened with uh, BAO, local uh, tournament organizer, player, uh, very into the ITC stuff, and he will be at LVO, possibly competing for winning the ITC, whatever that means. Uh, he won the BAO, Don, and uh, he brought 10 Death Guard Terminators. Do you know how many people at the last tournament at our store had Death Guard Terminators? I don't know, a couple. But you know how many before that? And I don't remember when the BAO was, and there might have been two tournaments already. But the point is, there was zero. So him alone winning the tournament, BAO, with Death Guard Terminators in his army, now all these other people, even just Chaos Armies, like a Chaos Demon Army and stuff I saw, they're just, whoop, there's that 510 Death Guard Terminator deep striking in. And that's, I think that's driven a lot because of uh, performance and events and these are probably people who only play occasional events or don't play them at all but you know they winning's fun too sometimes i guess unless you're me in age of sigmar then you feel like if you win you cheated then the game's broken and if you lose the game sucks but that's an age of sigmar problem so hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you're enjoying a thriving games workshop economy and hopefully you are buying Speed Freaks when it comes out. And I'm hoping somebody at my local store will give me the rules for that board game because I want to use it in my Necromunda narrative campaign for a gang Car Wars type game as a special like weekend or event. And that's it. So please subscribe. When we hit 500, we'll be doing a giveaway. And that's about all I got for you right now. Take care.